I pulled an old switcheroo last week as I went from having Loik Radzibov as my dog of the night play and I switched it to Bernardo Sopai midweek once I researched that fight and saw that he was the underdog. I felt a tad bit more confident in him than I had been in Radzibov. I still played Radzibov, but in terms of an actual dog of the night, it ended up being Sopai and we were so close to hitting that through the first seven minutes of that fight until Sopai threw everything in the kitchen sink trying to finish Oliveira, ended up slowing down, ended up gassing out and getting finished in the last minute of that fight. Very unfortunate there, so we take an L on that. Uh, for Octagon as well, we took a small or took a loss there on the dog of the night as Jason Pone was un- unable to get the split decision victory. It was his opponent. Very close fight. Could have gone to our guys well, but we end up taking an L there. So 0-2 on the weekend for dog of the night plays. That now drops our record to 6-3, and three, or sorry, 6-13 and 13 for a minus 4.21 units and a minus 22% ROI. Got to get back in the green. Got to get back in the black first. We got four events this weekend from the UFC to all the regional shows. So hopefully we can get back into the profit just this weekend alone. But the work is slow and steady. Nothing to chase. Nothing to rush. Just follow the reads and hopefully they're able to cash. All right. I got three dog of the night candidates for you guys for UFC 299. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. First one I got up for you guys is going to be in a banger of a matchup, in my opinion, between Mihal Oleksijak and Michel Pereira. I'm going to go with Oleksijak here at plus 125. I believe his ability to walk his opponents down and utilize his pace and pressure to put that uh, forward movement on his opponents and eventually break them and finish them later on in matchups will be very uh, important for him in this matchup against Pereira. Pereira will obviously have the speed and power advantage early on in this matchup, but the durability on Oleg Shajak has been very stellar and showcases to me that he could take some big shots while still moving forward and looking to find the finish and breaking his opponents down. I expect him to do that here against Pereira, who is a guy that has notoriously slowed down later in fights. He's done a decent enough job in terms of staying active enough and staying in fights so that he can still go out and win decisions. But I think he's going to struggle to do that against a guy who's going to constantly put him on his back foot and chase him around the cage, hopefully start cutting off the cage as well, mixing it up to the body, draining that gas tank of Pereira, and then eventually finding a combination to put him clean out. I like Oleg Shejok to go out there and finish Michel Pereira in the second or third round. The second dog of the night candidate I have for you guys is going to be the returning Catelyn Sermonara. You guys will know her as Catelyn Chukagian, but she obviously got married. And then she still has shown that she, she can be a high-level competitor at this rate. Her style is so reliable, and the fact that she just goes out there uh, and utilizes heavy output, high volume, utilizes that jab and one-two down the pipe, utilizes the kick up the middle, and she stays very persistent with it. Obviously, the power normally goes towards her opponents, as we saw in the Manolo Fiero fight, and we'll likely see in this Macy Barber fight, but I think the odds are a little bit too wide here at plus 180, as Catelyn does a great job in terms of staying competitive in all of her fights. Barber is still, you know, she's had some good momentum going, some questionable decisions going her way recently as well. But this is a fight where the the optics of Sermonara hopefully landing more often will play a factor into this matchup in terms of why she should go out there and win the decision. She will have to eat a couple shots from Barber, but as long as it doesn't look too significant or too optically pleasing to the judges, Sermonara should do a good enough job in terms of doing what she does best high volume, high output, and win this fight on the scorecards. The third and final dog of the night play that I have for you guys, your candidate, is going to be in the form of the debuting Michael Venom Page, who comes in at plus 110 as he takes on Kevin Holland. Now, right off the bat, I just want to say the UFC did a phenomenal job in terms of putting this fight together as the first fight for Michael Page in the UFC. We know this is going to be fun. We know this is going to be entertaining. We know both these guys are willing to go out there and slug it out. Now, a lot of people are leaning on the fact that Kevin Holland has his BJJ black belt and will likely have learned his lesson from the Stephen Wonderboy Thompson fight and he will look to grapple and take this to the ground and try to out grapple Michael Michael Page but one I don't know if his wrestling is good enough to really put Michael Page to the grinder the way that Logan Storley has done in the past obviously Storley far superior of a wrestler to uh to to Kevin Holland uh and secondly um even if he does like how can how do we know for certain that he's going to be effective with that style? 
that's kind of the big issue here. A lot of people are just just trusting that Kevin Holland is going to be able to do that and be successful with it. You know, if he's an underdog, sure, okay, maybe you can make the case for that and be like, all right, I'm hoping that he pulls it off here. But in terms of the striking, I think Page is a superior striker. I think Page has more power, and I think Page could potentially even knock out Kevin Holland, uh, who leaves himself a little bit too susceptible to getting hit, uh, especially by a guy that says, you know, clean, crisp, and disciplined as Michael Page. Um I think a lot of people believe people picking Page are just believing the hype of Michael Page, but I've been watching this guy since, like, since before he even made it to Bellator. Like, I know how good this guy is. I know his weaknesses. I've definitely bet against him in the past before and either cast or I had to rip up my ticket, but I feel this is a great stylistic matchup for him no matter the approach that Kevin Holland takes here. So give me Michael Page. I think he knocks out Kevin Holland in two, uh, probably the second or third round once he really starts to get going, once he really stops to take down attempts of Holland and Holland is forced to strike with him. So give me Michael Page. Michael Page by knockout plus 110. Which of these three did I end up going with as my official dog of the night play? Check the link in the description below for the Patreon page as I have it posted there. Those guys are all within the know. Over you know the 130, 40 members that we currently have on there, they all know what what the lock of the night play is, what the dog of the night play is. Now the only thing to do is to go out there and try to cash those tickets this weekend. Hopefully we're able to do that. All right. I will see you guys tomorrow for the UFC 299 quick picks as well as the free parlay uh, Lockheed Trinity, Lockheed Two-Step, trying to get back on track with that as well. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. See you guys then. Peace.